it was like somebody gave me some, some rare uh, exotic animal, you know, and said, well, here it is, take care of it now. And I, I didn't know anything about it. You know, I had, I had to learn. And I spent a lot of time, it's, it's a time thing, you know, it, it took time away from my own profession. Um, so, um, I had to learn enough to be able to cope with, with it, you know, see that th it didn't die or mm -hmm. get sick or something like that. Sundays he used to take us to, the, to um, Lincoln Park and we used to make a tour around the North Pond. And he used to tell us stories about a, a green checkered pig, colorful adventures. Um, he, uh, he was always interested in what we were doing, especially, you know, he encouraged us to paint and draw, and things like that. Um, I, I don't really, you know, it's, I wish I had more memories of him. Oh no, I mean, we, we weren't supposed to go within six feet of the easel. It was a sacred place for, for him. You know, we, we lived in an apartment that had north light and the living, you know, the living room side. So that's where he set up. But he, um, he was, you know, any paint, you know, paper, crayons, uh, casein paints, uh, watercolors, you know, whatever we wanted, you know, we could, he'd, he'd see, or he and my mom would see to it that we had. This friendship was very important and, and very close. And I remember Gropius coming to Chicago and, you know, keeping contact with my dad. My dad would, would you know, meet Gropius on the East Coast. He traveled a lot. So it, that was, they were close. I think he, he my dad would, so he, he deferred to Gropius. I mean, it was sort of like his, his father figure or whatever. Well, I remember they, one time they came over for lunch, and my sister and I were in the kitchen washing dishes, and they came in, and Gropius, he, you know, he shook hands with, he shook hands with us, and he said, you, you must call us Pia, Epias, Gropius, and Pia, uh, Isa Gropius. And my sister and I were just sort of struck dumb. We weren't going to call them anything, you know. It was just, um, wow. <laughs> you know, they came to us in the kitchen and said hello. We were very impressed. So that was one of my, my most vivid memories of them. They were, they were always very friendly to us. I would like, them, I would like people to know about him and that he, in his short lifetime, and he only lived to be 51, that he, he really tried to, to make a contribution to um, social life through his art. I mean, he was an idealist. He thought that if you could, if you could surround people with, with good thoughts and good, maybe good karma, I don't know, that they, would, they could live better. They'd be happier. They'd be more efficient in their work. They'd enjoy their free time more. They could educate themselves. You know, it was, it was just social idealism. Yes, I do. I think that if you surround yourself with, with ugly things, it, it's, it's not helpful, you know, but you can, you know, by looking at something beautiful, you can f feel better, you can maybe aim towards something a, a little bit better. You know, beautiful clothes, bling, mm -hmm. nice houses, um, good food, you know, these sort of things that, that should be encouraged. I think, I think it's important, and I think it does affect one's outlook on things.